All right. Uh, hello, everyone. These talks have been great. So really excited to be here with you. Thank you for the invitation. And I'm going to touch on yet another uh, area of climate change research, and that is around power outages. So what will I talk about today? Uh, power outages, who they affect, where is the data that we need to learn more about power outages, specifically related to health, which is the area I work in. Then I'm going to give some information on an, a recent nationwide study in the United States, and then I will touch on the Texas power crisis in 2021 uh, that Dr. Miner teed up for me in her lecture earlier. Okay, so let's do a little thought experiment if, if we can. So think about the last power outage that you experienced. How long did it last? Seconds? Minutes? Hours? This plot shows us the average duration of power outages worldwide. Uh, Latin America and the Caribbean are leading with durations on average lasting about eight hours. South Asia has shorter time periods. North America uh, is, is even a bit shorter yet. Was the outage that you experienced annoying? Were you worried you wouldn't be able to doom scroll on Twitter for as long as you wanted to? Or was it potentially life-threatening? Did you have someone in your household that was using a piece of medical equipment that relied on electricity? Did your home get too hot? So we know extreme temperatures can trigger climate change, or can trigger, well, they can, yeah, they can trigger power outages. And that's because when it gets really hot or really cold, we increase how much electricity we're using, so there's more demand on the grid. Also, when it's very hot, things can start to break down in our electrical system. And so there might be actually preventative shutoffs that take place from the power company. So this is a really nice study from Stone and colleagues. And it highlights these dual burdens that can exist around climate change. So in the top panel, they are showing for Atlanta, Detroit, and Phoenix indoor temperatures during heat waves that actually occurred after 1980 before 2020. And this is when the power's on, so air conditioning units can be run in these buildings. So you can see most of them are that gray periwinkle color, which indicates no risk. These homes are staying, for the most part, under about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We shift down to the second row, and things really are not looking so good. So this is simulated after five days of power being off in these three cities what the temperature indoors would be getting towards. And so particularly in Phoenix, almost every household is experiencing danger level indoor temperatures of 41 or greater degrees Celsius, so over 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Really, really hot very, very quickly. It's also possible your house gets too cold during this power outage. This happened during the Texas power crisis where uh, in addition to it being very cold, causing the grid to go down, we had power generation fail at natural gas plants. Uh, and in Texas, there's a particular issue because the Texas grid is cut off from the rest of the country, so they're unable to bring in power. We'll see a little bit of that uh, in a teaser at the end of this talk. Okay, so what is a climate change talk without a complicated fancy diagram that you cannot read? So here it is. Um, I'm checking that box, but this is to show Power outages in purple in that box in the middle are linked both um, before to distal causes, including our aging, electric grid, climate change, and this increased demand when we have extreme temperatures. And then downstream, some of the health outcomes that we know are related to power outages. We haven't done a great job of studying links between power outage and health yet at this point. Mostly what we've done is had a single large power outage occur and then go into a hospital or two and talk to clinicians about what they're seeing. And so what clinicians have said so far, unfortunately, a lot of carbon monoxide poisoning. So this happens when people in incorrectly use generators and actually get carbon monoxide building up in their homes. Um, we've also seen links to things like gastrointestinal illness if food spoils and people are eating that food. Um, seen some evidence 
of disease exacerbation as well. Um, for example, people with asthma, COPD, or cardiovascular illness. But we don't know that much yet. And so there's a lot more to come down the line, I think. Okay, so let's talk about what we know about power outages in the United States. Where is the data? So the best source of data to date has been the US Energy Information Administration. They provide these reports at the end of every year. They're very helpful. They provide us information like what we see here, which is essentially since 2013, an upward trend in power outages nationwide. It's broken down in dark blue without major events, light blue with major events, which includes uh, extreme weather events, hurricanes, storms, and the like. And so you can see this increase is mostly driven, as we might expect under climate change scenarios, by these major events. So the EIA also breaks this down at the state level over the entire year. And so slightly more complicated plot, but on the y-axis we're seeing the total number of power outages at the state level. And then across the x-axis we're seeing the total duration of interruptions. So the people in the top corner, Louisiana, are doing the worst. They're having the most uh, interruptions or power outages and they're experiencing the most total duration of power out. But this is basically where we've been to date. We didn't have data that we could really use to study health outcomes because in order to look at health, a national, you know, a statewide annual average isn't really good enough. And so we wanted to go out and try to improve upon this. And so to do that, we've been working with poweroutage.us, which is this company which essentially scrapes from all utility company APIs that they can get to, which covers about 95% of the US, um, customers without power every time a change is reported. And so these data are reported on customers, both residential as well as businesses. And so we have this data at the sub-hourly level across the United States from 2018 to 2020. These are some excellent uh, doctoral students at Columbia. We have Vivian Doe and Heather McBride, who's working with me as a research assistant, and they're the ones who really got into this, this data and have cleaned it for all of us to look at today, so thank you to them. But basically what this looked like, we, we have rows and rows of data, and every time a utility reports a change in the number of customers without power, a new row of data is added. And so after a lot of work, we got to this to the point where for every county in the United States, for every hour of the day between 2018 and 2020, we could say how many customers were out in that county. So we ended up with about 90, 79 million rows of data to work with. And so what did we find with these data? So we wanted to identify power outages, right? That's what we're interested in. But there's a couple different ways to think about power outage. Uh, when, especially when you think about the United States, we're looking at the county level, very different numbers of people live in each US county. And so we wanted to create two metro metrics that were comparable. So the first, we created a relative metric. So this would just be the portion of people in a county without power, essentially. Then we also are interested in an absolute metric or the total number of people without power so we could identify places we need to really improve. So with this relative metric, any county where over half a percent of the people living there were without power, we counted that as a power outage. And we, we wanted to count up the number of one hour and eight hour or longer power outages across the country during this time. We also created this absolute metric, which just summed up essentially customers without power over how many hours within that county over the period. So two different metrics that we can potentially learn different things about power outages from. We also wanted to know, do we see differences in who's experiencing these power outages along lines of medical and social vulnerability? Because as we've heard about from everyone that's spoken so far today, we anticipate that people of lower socioeconomic status or communities of color may have more trouble adapting to these exposures, may have less resources available. So we wanted to identify if these communities were overburdened in terms of power outages. So to identify medical vulnerability, we use data from Medicare. And this identified people using electricity-dependent medical equipment. These are people that are obviously very vulnerable during a power outage. So someone that's using something like an, an oxygen concentrator in their home, where if this goes out, it can become rapidly very dangerous for them. 
And so here you're seeing the nationwide distribution of these folks. Um, the fourth quartile are those counties that have a higher proportion of people relying on electricity-dependent medical equipment. We also used the CDC's Social Vulnerability Index. So this is an index that's created from 15 variables from the US Census, things like um, socioeconomic status, disability, that identify, per the CDC, what they think of as counties that may need additional help when, it is, when a disaster actually takes place. So again, on this map, red indicates counties with higher levels of social vulnerability. So to summarize what we found in a table, 92% of the counties in our study population, which made up 95% of the counties in the US, had at least one eight-hour power outage during the study period. We also saw virtually all the counties in our study population had at least a one-hour power outage. So power outages are super prevalent. Um, the median number of eight-hour outages each year at the county level, two. Let's look at this on a map, I think more informative perhaps. So here, the darker colors indicate counties with a greater number of eight-hour power outages. Um, so we can see Maine, Michigan, Appalachia, Louisiana, Northern California kind of stand out as the places with the highest counts of these eight-hour outages. Similar distribution of one-hour outages, you can notice the numbers and the frequency of one-hour outages goes up quite a bit. Uh, a similar pattern, but more spread out even along the East Coast. And here's our ab absolute metric of power outages. So in the highest level of customer hours without power, we have, a, we have counties with over 12 million customer hours without power during a year on average. I believe that is a county uh, in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan. So similar pattern actually using our absolute metric, but you can, you can see the actual burden thinking about the number of people our experienced. Okay, so what about over the year, what does this look like? Things that we all know about these outages um, on the y-axis, we're looking at time of day. So these outages are starting around 3 to 6 p.m. on average. We see more of them during the summer months, perhaps not shocking. This is outages by state over the course of the year. You can see Texas at the very top in April, that red color peaking. Um, there are a lot of thunder and lightning storms in Texas during that time of year, and so that's one major driver of these outages. And then you can see our leading states correlate with population of the states, but Michigan has moved up in comparison to where you might expect it to be. So 45 million total customer hours without power in Michigan on average each year. Okay, I wanna touch on our vulnerability metrics. So. Unfortunately, what we see, the fourth quartile being the level, uh, or the counties with the highest counts of people that depend on electricity for medical equipment use have more outages in general. So you can see more red in that fourth quartile. We see something, and then here you're looking at local indicators of spatial correlation. The, the things you really wanna hone in on here are the counties in red. These are places with high counts of outages and high numbers of people relying on electricity to use medical equipment. And so these are places we might want to think about targeting for prevention, grid upgrades, uh, or disaster planning. We see something similar with the social vulnerability index where more social vulnerability appears to be correlated with higher outage counts on average across the year. And very similar areas pop out in terms of this dual burden of social vulnerability and high counts of outages. So Appalachia, Michigan, Louisiana, West Texas, and parts of Northern California. All right, I'm very br briefly going to mention what happened in Texas in 2021 with some more qualitative data. So this is work led by Nina Flores, who's a doctoral student at Columbia. Um, and so for folks who don't remember, there was a massive winter storm that took place in February 2021. Power went out for 
number of days in Texas, a lot of the grid had to be completely taken offline in order to prevent massive damage across the system. And like I said, Texas is cut off from other electricity suppliers, and so this, this really worsened the crisis in the state. Here's a trend over time. So we see at the peak, nearly four million people in Texas without power by the data that we have access to here. And you can see um, at the county level, there are certain counties, especially that contain Dallas and Houston, where half a million people were without power for multiple days. So we surveyed 1,000 people. 50% of them said that they experienced at least a 24-hour power outage during the past year. We also, unfortunately, among our survey participants, observed racial disparities in who experienced an outage, with African-American participants reporting 1.7 times the odds of experiencing a 24-hour outage during this time period. We also, unfortunately, found that people that relied on electricity-dependent medical equipment were no more prepared than other people in our sample. And the sample overall was not prepared, less than 50% met standard preparedness guidelines from the CDC. And then finally, we observed that people that had lower educational attainment also had lower levels of preparedness. So this isn't something surprising, but kind of reinvigorates us to do something about this as we can anticipate future major outages of this type. So let me finish up with some conclusions here. So like I mentioned, very little research to date on the health implications of outages. We're hoping now to use this massive data set that we've created to actually conduct some nationwide studies to understand the relationship between chronic power outage and health. To do that, we also might like to get sub-county information, and so that's something to do in the future. And finally, we need to consider environmental justice to equitably allocate preparedness resources, disaster response, and infrastructure improvements. So I will end there and look forward to the Q&A. Thank you.